Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop, and today I want to show you this new tool. I did a video a little while back, I think it was extreme reverse curve shaping, uh, reverse curve shrinking, and uh, it's shaping too. So we made this up out of a uh, big giant old water pipe, I guess it is, or maybe it's a sewer pipe. I don't know, I picked it up second hand. It was brand new, but uh, it was surplus to a job or something. So. I've got a whole bunch of these smaller ones, but it was nice to have this big one. This will allow you to do uh, just really large uh, reverse curves. And I was just uh, given a job where I had to make this extreme reverse curve, and Mark will insert the uh, picture in to show you what I had to do, and this made it possible. So I'll describe that reverse curve that I did had uh, a, a sides coming way up and the other, the other part going way down like this and to do that by all stretching the metal would get really thin so you have to shrink in the center of the panel and it's very difficult to shrink in the center of a panel unless you have some kind of device like this. Like I said I have small ones that are about this big to this big to this big and maybe I'll get a, uh, even a larger pipe someday who knows. So. The, the issue is you have to put the metal around this and that traps it and I'll show you. Uh, the pieces I did were 18 gauge steel but you could do them with 16 gauge, you could even do it heavier. So at first uh, when I made this uh, we were just bending the metal over it and you kind of hold it. And one, you hold it with one leg and somebody holds it on the other side. And the whole trick is when you bend it like that that's when you get the metal captured and you cannot shrink unless you keep it captured. So as you hit here it wants to straighten up and you don't, you don't get the capture, you don't get the shrinkage. So in the case of the 18 gauge I knew it was going to be impossible to hold it so I had to do a clamping system. So my first attempt at a clamping system was the uh, the common ratcheting strap. So I put these hooks here and I was going to put the ratcheting straps over here and I pulled it down and that was all good. But then it became apparent that I was going to have to use heat on that 18 gauge steel in order to really get the shrinks. So the ratcheting straps didn't like the heat. So that was an idea that went out the... Uh, was, was no good. So those were a waste of time. And then I came up with the idea of just blasting some holes here and I put some threaded rod and put a couple boards across but that turned out to not work so well either. So I said I need straps, I need adjustability so I came up with this idea. These are just uh, sheared straps, uh, strips of, of uh, sheet metal and it doesn't matter if you get them hot and they're, and they're uh, sacrificial, there's no problem there, you can keep making them as you need them. So I got them clamped here on the other side I clamp them onto this uh, angle iron, and this angle iron is adjustable so we can tighten it right all up. So we'll take this, this is just wrapped around right now, pull that off like this, and I'll show you the clamping system. So we put this on, like that, wrap the strap around it. Alright, so now what we'll do is we'll use these nuts and pull that down and that'll tighten these straps right up. Right, that should do it. With that tight like that now, if we hit these straps it's not a big deal. So we're gonna, we're gonna hit like this, it's all captured. This is uh, I think only 20 gauge, I just want to use that to show the action. The metal starts to get really confused there now. And these are what I call the spines or the ridges. Same as if you're doing an edge shrink, it's the exact same thing. Now if this was 18 gauge or 16 gauge or something like that, you're going to have to heat these. Heat these with a torch. 20 gauge you can move it. Even uh, uh, 063 aluminum you're going to have to heat it. 
to get it to be a little more malleable. And you can't get this in one go. You're going to have to hit it, make it all conf what I call confused like that, partially shrunk. And then what we did is we made another tool that's the reverse and that will allow us to planish this out really easy. I'll show you that in a minute. But to get the full reverse shrinkage with no stretching on the edge at all, uh, it'll probably take about two or three goes on this tool. So you have to get to a point where the metal, the metal is starting to form those hard spines. And just like on edge shrink, you don't want those to go over and you've got to be very careful these don't go over. So you can only go so far. Then we're going to planish it out on this, put it back on, and then we'll do another round and maybe planish it out and another round. But we only do one round in this video. So you get the idea what's possible. This is loosened up a little bit so that should be tightened a little bit. We're just going to show the initial shrinking process, the tool, and then we'll put it on the planisher. So it looks like a mess, but that's a lot happening right there. That's a really good thing. So now, if you feel it, it actually gets a little warm because the uh, metal is working against itself so much. So now we can take these clamps off, loosen that up. Take that clamp off. And if your clamps get beat up, you just cut a couple new clamps out of 20 gauge or whatever. It'll work fine. So there's our piece. It doesn't look like much, but you can see we're getting a lot of reverse in there and there's no stretching at all on the edge at all. It's still its original thickness. So now these will actually shrink a little bit here. They'll open up a little but they'll shrink. This is a perfect tool for shrinking it. this was thicker metal, if it was brass or copper or stainless, you're going to have to heat it to, to work. You get that all crunched down like that and that's still shrinking at this point. Then you can put it in the wheel and you can traverse in the wheel this way here which is going to stretch it a little bit, but actually it's going to be still shrinking until it gets all flat. And then at some point, once it gets flat, it'll start expanding again. So you've got to just bring it to a point where it's planished or smooth. And then you'll see you've got this nice reverse curve going on here. And uh, it's just a wonderful tool, very simple to make. Uh, gives you a potential of doing panels you thought were impossible to do. So I just wanted to show that everybody can uh, maybe find some of these in a scrapyard or some kind of surplus situation. And uh, I hope you like that. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop. Please remember to subscribe. Give us some likes and some comments. And remember, uh, we have like 199 videos. Go to our YouTube homepage. Just type in Pro Shaper. It'll bring it to the homepage. The drop-down menu, it says videos, they're all there in chronological order. So a lot of people just find these on the side of YouTube and figure I've only got a couple videos, but I got almost 200 videos. And we had a four-week hiatus, but now we're going to start doing some more. So remember, it's Ray from Pro Shaper. Metal is clay. Anything's possible. Thank you.